All right, gentlemen, let it be said that I did it. I defeated McMahon. I defeated the WWE in the past week. Because uh, for those of you who do not subscribe to us on YouTube, uh, check us out. Look it up on the BS Network. Uh, me and my good friend Brady Cook, he was on the podcast a couple weeks ago. We are doing a WWE 2K17 My Career playthrough. <laughs> oh, how... Man, that is that is topical considering 2K18 just dropped. <laughs> oh, yeah, Doc. It's great. Um, we're starting the longest-running 2K17 playthrough of all time. We're hoping 2K20 will be out by the time we're done. You st and you still you'll nope. still only be number two contender for the world heavyweight title. <laughs> yeah. Can your um can your final episode be you moving to two K twenty? Yeah, twenty twenty. <laughs> and uh, Captain Teen, our character, is just like, what's all this about? Um, no, no, no. I uploaded it this Monday. The I uploaded the episode this Monday, and I got dun 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 a copyright strike. Oh shit, the dog! Oh snap! Big Big Papa Vince came down on me with the ban hammer, and he was just like, you're using footage from NXT, how dare you? Because in my career, if you play, like, go into an episode of NXT, it will play the intro of NXT. So they thought that I was just putting on a small, like, five-second clip from NXT. So I disputed that shit, and I said, this is fair use. We are critiquing you, Mr. McMahon. And you know what I got two days later? A notice saying, WWE said that you're right. And they <laughs> released the video. I you did actually, it! You, you got a knock at the door, and then you see just the disheveled Vince McMahon with, like, his tie pulled down and his shirt halfway unbuttoned, and he just hands you a piece of paper, and he says, Take that, you son of a bitch, and don't <laughs> let me ever see you again. No, 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 Actually, I do have the... I've got the footage, the footage right here of the exchange. Apologize! Apologize for what you've done! I apologize, you son of a bitch! Yeah! Ladies and gentlemen, the following podcast is scheduled for one fall. Making their way down the aisle, they are the greatest podcasting tag team in all of time and space. They are Blake Tanner, Scotty Moore, and they are the B. Yes. And joining them, as always, he is the Lord of the smart side. He is the Dylan. And together, they are known as the Fight Boys. Welcome to Fight Boys. <laughs> Welcome to Fight Boys, ladies and gentlemen, the weekly podcast about professional wrestling and not so professional wrestling. I am your host, the the hero of the JWF. I am Scotty Moore, joined as always by my tag team partner in crime. It's he, the B, the man that makes the ladies scream, Blake Tanner. Now, I'm curious as to who gave you the moniker, the hero of the JWF, because... <laughs> Him, he books it. I don't know if you know this. There's a slight, there's a slight chance for corruption in the power structure of that company. Um, Blake Tanner, the the booking team, the booking team behind the JWF gave me that name. Oh shit! I forgot. We for I had I we I I need to give you your new nickname, which was the anti underdog. Oh, yeah, that's a real, that's such a catchy fucking nickname as compared to the hero. <laughs> the hero! Motherfucker! I've written a book about heroes. I am a hero centric. Oh, also, Dylan's here, by the way. Also, I'm a hero centric person. Hey, 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 listen, I demand my, I demand my actual title, confirmed WWE insider, the Dylan. Oh, fuck. <laughs> but yeah, the, the insider and Lord of the Smart Side himself, the Dylan, is here. Yeah, well, you see, Dylan, you might have gotten most of your predictions right. I got all but one, you son of a bitch. Did it! Did it! Did it! Did it! 
dick. Fucking Jesus. It's like it's it's it with that win, he, it's literally now become lol Roman Reigns instead of lol John Cena. We've yes. we've made the transition, boys. That is the, the torch new era. that John passed. Is the lol Roman also, win. Have you seen the great picture of everybody raising Roman Reigns' hand uh, and like all the glad handing? Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, it's, it's my favorite beautiful. thing on the planet. Um Yeah, I, Fuck no mercy. Can we just say it? Like, a lot of times I joke and I'm like, hey guys, just so you know, our pay-per-view was so, the JWF pay-per-view so much better than WWE's. This time I mean it. We were superior to the WWE pay-per-view. It just really fucking sucked. T- to be fair, Sheamus did try to kill himself to try and make that pay-per-view better. Hey, I will not dispute the good quality of that tag team match that was easily far and above the match of the night and is one of the be- better matches that I've seen, you know, all month. Oh, yeah, 100% that was the best match of the night. Cesaro's teeth went up into his gums. His <laughs> teeth did not fall out. They got shoved up further into his face. And then he took an Adavica, or uh, was it Adavacadabra from fucking, fucking <laughs> Seth Rollins. God. Oh yeah, anytime they hit like a super kick or something that's meant to contact the face, like the bro kick at the end, I was just like, huh, that bro kick that usually hits him square in the jaw, managed to hit him about in the shoulder area. <laughs> Jesus, man. But Does my it- favorite was the fact... The fact that after the uh, after the Roman Cena match, I, I went over to uh, to a lady's house and uh, was like, "Hey, you want to watch No Mercy, <laughs> or as I'd like to call it, a little tenderness?" <laughs> In case you're wondering the kind of man I am, I was just like, "Hey, I know we're supposed to hang out, and I'm gonna be over in a few minutes, but we have to watch something very important. I need you to download the WWE Network." And she goes, why? No answer from me, because at that point, I'm in my car, one hand on the wheel, the other hand up, watching Cena versus Reigns, because I still had hope in my life at that moment. And I just walk into her house, my hands on my phone, like, I must see what happens. I have to know. And then afterwards, I uh, my phone died, and... You were spared. You were spared. And then, of course, uh, I turned on my phone after a while... Uh, after that, and I got to read the magical results of the rest of No Mercy. Wherein we have a new cruiserweight champion, and never have I been more upset that Dylan was right. <laughs> you all didn't want to believe me. You all were like, no, no, no. WE couldn't do this, I... you fucking sheep. <laughs> We just didn't want to admit it. We didn't want to say it. Uh, well, for me, uh, we were just like, maybe the- if we just put, if we just dream board this into the world, Vince will have a change of heart. <laughs> nope. No, 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 no. To be fair, though, the the uh, the the multi-person beatdown of Enzo Amore to end Raw was one of the better things I've ever seen. It's pretty fantastic. I haven't felt I haven't felt like so like good seeing somebody get beat down since like the early like, Attitude Era, only, where you're just like oh, only slightly fuck less comedy. Edge. I hope like I don't know. five people beat the crap out of him, and then they did, and you're just like, oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah, my favorite uh, thing about that was you know wait, in the wait, dark segment after the, the beat show, down from the cruiserweight that like, I enjoyed man, was on really Twitter the previous night during the. Match. Uh, we have Mustafa. Uh, yeah. Braun Strowman, friend to the cruiserweights. He's like the anti Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Well, at some point, at this point, he could just be Kevin Nash in the X Division. Patience. One day. And the loudmouth will be no more. Y'all getting worked into a shoot, brother. <laughs> Gallagher saying, and they called me a joke. Drew Gulak just sent out, No! Oh. To be fair. That is completely in keeping with Drew Gulak's character on that. Also, I love how Drew Gulak stopped Mustafa Ali from doing an inverted 450 only to have the entire division be like, come on, just let him this one time. It's, it's Enzo. Just let him hit it this one time because <laughs> fuck that guy. <laughs> and then he was like, yeah, let's do it. He also did an airplane spin in full business attire. That was hilarious. Um, uh, my personal favorite through the entire tweet de- tweet barrage, though, was from one Akira Tozawa who just quietly commented, I like Enzo. That was it. He was just like, guys. I believe he was the only, I, I think he was the only person not to beat the ever-loving shit out of Enzo during that thing. Yeah. Um, 
Lindsay Dorado and fucking uh, Grand Metal League did a fucking super kick party on his face. Now, who Beautiful. was it that apparently on 205 Live he aligned with someone tonight? I can't. I, was it? You say that like I watch 205 Live. Yeah. Oh, you haven't watched 205 Live. Really? So what you're yeah. saying is that Enzo coming out and being like, I made this show relevant. Uh, that's a fucking lie. Well, I didn't watch SmackDown tonight either. They did let him close Raw. I mean, now that the double turn has happened, I'm mad because I'm liking Enzo because I hate Enzo with the burning passion of a thousand hot suns. Welcome to getting worked. I know you haven't been here for um about a dozen years. So while while you're here, let's get a little bit reacclimated to the space. This is what it's like to feel the magic in wrestling again. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> this is what it's like to feel magic. It's beautiful. <laughs> well, because on Monday we're gonna shove you back into the Roman zone. Donut, donut, donut. I will have my vest ready. You're the real Intercontinental Champion, Roman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you my firstborn child. You deserve it. it. It just makes me feel good when they're able to make a villain. Like, me and Blake were talking about this after the show, and it's not wrestling related. But I'm watching Stranger Things now, and Stranger Things is very good about having people that you just hate with a burning passion. And they aren't written to be sympathetic, and they're not using, like, cheap stuff to try to get you to hate them, they just naturally are able to make you hate them, which is why Enzo is doing well. Unlike the most racist motherfucker on this planet, Jinder Mahal. Mahal. Jinder Mahal, the man with the anti-racism gimmick. The man who came out and was just like, I come to America and you people treat me like this. I mean, to be fair... He is also Asian, so like maybe it's less racist in his eyes. I don't know. In WWE's eyes, I mean. I'm sorry. Well, yeah. Jinder, Jinder Mahal doesn't write his own promos. He's a fucking stooge. <laughs> Guess who just forgot about the fact India was in Asia? I was confused for a minute, but you're right. He's totally wait can Canadian. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's billed as he's billed kayfabe as Indian. Okay, listen. I'm... Canada is my favorite Asian country. Tim Hortons is my favorite Oriental themed restaurant. <laughs> um, that's a sign. You need to go to the next. You need to go to the next SmackDown taping in Alabama. Tim Hortons is my favorite yeah. Indian restaurant. <laughs> no, no, no. You put that. That's that is that is Jinder Mahal's favorite Indian restaurant. There you, you hold up that <laughs> sign. I mean, and also, it's not like you can't, like, you can't be racist because somebody's two countries away from you. Think about how racist people in America are towards everybody that's south of them. Yeah. Well, I mean, what was bad was the fact that I was, like, uh, they were playing SmackDown in the living room. I was cooking. And I just hear from the other room, gender, and gender was, of course, doing the same shtick he did, what, now two weeks ago, where... In the most horribly booked segment of all time, he just puts up pictures of Shinsuke's face and is just like, he looks funny. He look hey, do you like it? Yeah, but then he throw yeah, right there. He, I was just like hearing like half of sentence every once in a while, but then I definitely heard this sentence. Man, he always looks the same. And I went, did this motherfucker? Yep. Just say rooks the same? that apparently went on to call him Mr. Miyagi. As an aside, I would just like to say that I hate any segment that involves a superstar pointing at pictures on the big screen. No, there was one and it was good. And that was Kurt Angle versus Edge whenever they were doing the hair versus hair match. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah, you're on a different level than me. With me, it's Chris Jericho versus Randy Orton where he's like, <laughs> Me want title shot. Hold on, let me show you guys. And then up on the screen, you saw Chris Jericho's face. Want, and it was like hands grabbing. Title, the WWE Championship shot. And I think it had like a gun. It was, and then he goes, everyone, say it with me. Me want title shot. What was the Kurt one? I don't remember the Kurt one. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. He was like, here's what Edge would look bald, and he was making fun of all those things, and then Edge is just like, and this is what you'll look like bald, which is what he actually looks like bald now. <laughs> but it was Kurt Angle, it was Kurt Angle doing like, like, you know, heel comedy stuff, so he was being dorky as shit, and it was, it was mildly, it was, it was more than mildly How about if I quantify anything that's happened in the last five years that's involved pictures on the screen? Oh, now, now you're making me think, because, uh, no, there was not, there was never a good one. They used to be really good, actually, you know what, I can think of another good one. It was when, uh, Stephanie was having her baby... And then the next week, DX came out, and Vince McMahon was in the ring, and uh, they were DX was in the feud with Vince, and DX came out and was just like, hmm, what's that baby look like? I don't know, what do you think the baby looks like? And then they put up on the screen a picture of Triple H's face just photoshopped onto a baby body with a DX bib. And I was like, damn it, that's dumb, but it's so good. <laughs> Uh, I think DX could get away with that, though. Yeah, uh, that's what's... I, I, I mean, I understand where they're coming from, the people who are just like, man, I hate 2006 DX. They're all like poopy dick jokes. It's horrible. Fuck D 2006 DX. Yo, I'm gonna be straight up honest. 2006 DX is the reason I got started watching wrestling again. It was the, uh, it was the segment with... Sean had been gone after his match at WrestleMania 25 with Taker for a while, and uh, Triple H was having this big spat with Legacy, and he was like, I need a tag team partner, and then he calls up Shawn Michaels, and I was like, I was, of course, being the arrogant re like wrestling hater and be like, this is so fake, it's whatever, and then they were just like, DX reunites next week, and I just went, I'm sorry? I guess I'm coming back next week. I like the, I like the part I like the part where um Shawn Michaels was working at a as a line cook at like some cafeteria. Little oh, yeah. girl was being a, was being a shit to him and he was just like, "You know what? I don't need this job." And like off camera super kicks like a 12-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> and that and that's the and that cemented my respect for Shawn Michaels. <laughs> it's on par with Ty, Ty the the greatest performance Ty Dillinger has ever given as Stan. In the backstage segment where Sean just super kicks him randomly and he goes, What's your name? Stan. Super kick. See? I just kicked Stan. Wasn't Stan. Who? Stan was Ty. It was Ty Dillinger, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was Ty Dillinger. <laughs> and then a 12 year old walks up to him with a salad and is just like, This is nasty. And then Sean looks at her, looks, it was a, it was a little girl, not even a boy. Sean looks at her, looks back at Triple H, then off camera super kicks a little child. Oh. Oh. I, I like that the, this week for wrestling has been so not good that we are now just like, You remember the good old days? Uh huh, that's. To be, to be fair. To be fair, when DX was when DX two thousand six was happening, those were considered by the fans at the time not the good old uh, the good times. Mm -hmm. So I'm a really I'm looking really sadly at the future. We're going to look back at this and be like, hey, you guys remember when uh, when Jinder Mahal was WWE champion? And, now, that wasn't that bad. I mean, okay. at least it wasn't like it'll eventually become like new Attitude Era where people are just like, I just wish people would come out on television and talk about Japanese people and how they look the same. <laughs> Like, what the fuck? There were no. some good moments this week from Raw. Um, the Braun, Braun Strowman destroying people and killing Dean Ambrose. That was very nice. He committed a murder. Yeah. Um, the only problem... The problem I had with that segment was the fact that, uh, you know, they teased the big Shield reunion in the beginning. And so you're obviously like, oh, during the Miz match, Dean and Seth are going to come out and it's going to be awesome. And then Braun's out. He's just like... I want someone who'll put up a big fight. Out comes Dean, and I'm like, well, fuck. Okay. It sounds Shield exactly reunion. like something Dean would do. And tonight, um, well, uh, Big E pulled out a microphone out of a popcorn bowl. Of course he did. <laughs> well, see, okay, going back to Roman for one second. Here's my one problem I had with the big uh, beatdown that the Miz Taraj did on him is there was this really awesome moment where uh, Bo Dallas, my favorite Johnny Depp character of all time, and Curtis Axel pick him up, and they're walking over to Miz, 
And it would obviously be this moment where you're like, all right, here comes Dean and Seth. It's going to be amazing. It's like it booked perfectly. And instead of that, Roman just single-handedly beats all of them away. Like he just like elbows them both off of him, tosses them out of the ring, beats up Miz. And I was like, well, fuck. Okay. I, I'm sorry. Have you not seen? I, I, let me introduce you to Roman Reigns, Scotty. Because that's what he does. You know what I thought, Blake? Is that just really made Roman look strong? More than anything else, Roman looks really strong during that. My favorite moment of that segment was um, Corey Graves and his beautiful call. Um, that's what the shield used to do! <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> the the Miz Taraj all get in, they put their fists together, Bo Dallas does it backwards because he's awkward. <laughs> No, 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 no. They did the Miz Taraj one where, like, it's everybody's doing the right hand because they're completely oh, in Oh, okay. Um, and, and then, of course, Corey Graves, in case any everyone in the WWE universe has sudden amnesia, just goes, that's what the shield used to do. Like, thank you, Grandma. We know. Listen, Corey Graves has been a great commentator 99% of the time. I will give him a free pass. Corey Graves, we... <laughs> My dad had a very astute observation, which is that Corey Graves is going to become the new Jerry Lawler, and that most of the time you're like, okay, but every once in a while, there's going to be something that pops out, and you're like, no, 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 he, hopefully he's just 90s Jerry Lawler, because God well, that's help what we me mean. if he yeah, becomes, yeah. Yeah. God help me if he becomes late 2000s <laughs> Jerry Lawler again. He's, he, I, I especially like him with Byron and Tom. Oh, Yeah. Well, when he has people to insult like a motherfucker, yes. Yep. Uh, he's very good at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what else people are are good at? Oh, damn it. That didn't work at all. That didn't work like I wanted. Merch.aloadofpurebs.com. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Merch. Do you like, sh do you like clothes? Yeah, you in, you into clothes and shirts and stuff? Then go over to merch.aloadofpurebs.com, click in that Fight Boys section, and pick you up a shirt. We've got shirts for the Fight Boys. We got our logo on it. We have a Fight Effin' Boy shirt if you're into some EC dub. And, of course, we do have shirts for that amazing Birmingham, Alabama-based professional wrestling organization, the J. W F. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We have shirts for the uh, J W F World Heavyweight Champion Griffin Clouds and the V W O. We have shirts for the Dylan. We have shirts for the B S, and we have the brand new Heroes Never Die shirt for Scotty Moore. Actually debuted at uh, last last week's. Uh, no oh God, what did we name it? I've already forgotten. Little tenderness. Little tenderness, J guys. It's been a week. Uh. But uh, yeah, I, I can tell you stole a shirt design from from uh, freaking uh, oh Overwatch. Wait, the sh my shirt? <laughs> yeah, no Blake's shirt. No, you you stole your 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 shirt from I believe some half coked dream you had. Oh my! I don't think you understand. You've been to our website because Blake doesn't have a shirt yet. <laughs> Only I do. <laughs> I have a shirt. Although, I would totally love if you stole a design from Overwatch for my shirt. <laughs> I mean, my, I stole the design for my shirt from my arm because it's just my tattoo with different words on it. So, Dylan, did you get as excited as me when you went on, when you got on Twitter the other day during Monday Night Raw and uh, just saw a beautiful picture of five gentlemen standing next to each other with a big, beautiful flag that just said Bullet Club across the top. And uh, the Elite just fucking invaded Raw, kind of. I mean, I, I on the one hand, I was like, ah, neat. And on the other hand, I'm like, WWE will never acknowledge that this happened. I, I feel like the closest they got to acknowledging it was the fact that they put Cody's brother in a match against the OG leader of the Bullet Club. I feel like that was the closest they got to it. Although my favorite Did Gallows and Anderson even show up on Monday. I don't. I don't even remember. No, they were out in the parking lot drinking some brewskis with the good old boys. They're recording a good old episode of the worst damn podcast that ever damn was. Oh no! What my favorite was the fact that like no WWE employee took a picture with Bullet Club, even though they were right there. 
with one exception, who is a WWE writer and former Ring of Honor, I think, tag team champion, Jimmy Jacobs, who did yeah, no, not... Former... Former former WWE or uh, former ROH tag team champion. I think he's like held tag team champions a couple of places. Oh yeah, <laughs> but that um, seems like something Jimmy Jacobs would do. <laughs> that man's a former drug addict. I'm pretty sure he just doesn't give a fuck in life. <laughs> um. Well. Oh yeah. Because Age of the Fall with Tyler Black, aka Seth mm-hmm. Rollins, the clear <laughs> Shawn Michaels of the team. <laughs> And that's not me dissing Jimmy Jacobs. Jimmy himself has called himself the Marty Jannetty of the Age of the Fall. Which is which is saying something, because wasn't the Deathmatch wrestler in that one? Oh, Jesus, he might have been. Um, let's see. At least Jimmy Jacobs could talk and had, like, a discernible look, even if it was being emo. I was obsessed with Jimmy Jacobs for a point there, because anytime I can read about something that happened in wrestling and not find the footage of it, I know, oh shit, something went down that day. And when the Age of the Fall debuted, they, uh, who was it? It was Jay or Mark Briscoe. They beat the shit out of and then hung him from the rafters bleeding. And then Jimmy just took a bath in his blood. And I was like, that sounds metal as shit. I want to see it. Couldn't find it no matter where I went. That was one. And then I think there was a CM Punk match he had with Raven where he got crucified on a red axe, and I was like, I want to see that. Couldn't find any footage of that either. I got pissed. Yeah, no, I've seen the footage of him doing that. He wore, like, a white jacket and, like, white, like, uh, white tights, and then he would wear those, apparently he would wear those tights afterwards, like, with the dried blood on him, just <laughs> just as a message, just like, yep, still a crazy man. Oh, that's metal as fuck, yes! He, by the uh, way, he's a five-time Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champion. Jesus, I knew it, okay. I like that we started this off with like the Bullet Club did this thing, and then we got really fu- deep into Jimmy Jacobs is pretty cool, right? Ballad of Lacey, that was a good storyline. I enjoyed that. I miss him. I miss him as a wrestler. He was a great wrestler. Yeah. Well, since we're talking about things that are horribly off topic, I want you guys to check in the chat. I want you to see this recent picture of a legend. Of a legend. Of a legend. Of a WWE. Legend. Uh, some would call him a national treasure. That oh my god, that is a scrawny ass Steve Austin. Uh huh. And look at his fucking arms. He's tiny and jacked as shit. Let me tell you something, buddy. It was hard to give up beer, but carbs haven't touched this body in a long time. John Morrison <laughs> taught me this shit. <laughs> Damn, he's been doing. He's been hitting that keto hard, man. Damn right doing that damn ketosis, drinking some whiskey, getting fucked up. Uh, I'm t- I feel like his voice should be a little bit higher because he's tinier now. <laughs> My name's Stone Cold Steve Austin. I'm a little bit smaller, but I can still whoop that ass. I hope you say that until you have to stand next to Stone Cold, realize how much bigger than in you he is even with these changes. Oh, yeah, uh. 100%. Uh, yeah, I've had that numerous... That was the bad thing is because I spent a long time meeting wrestlers, so I was always used to, if I met a famous person, they would be gigantic compared to me. And then when I met my, well, he's now my friend. At the time, I just considered him a famous person. Uh, my buddy Brian, Brian Brushwood of Scam School Modern Rogue fame. That motherfucker tiny. <laughs> he is so small. And I was just like, oh, is this what real people are like? <laughs> yes. I think you forgot to take into account the fact that you were meeting wrestlers. Yeah, I forgot to take that into account. And so I was just like, oh, normal people are my size. Cool. Come here, dude. Unless you're, uh, unless you're a giant like me and then every wrestler is still smaller than you. And you're like, did I go into the wrong profession? <laughs> <laughs> then the one day you meet Braun Strowman. Thanks to the JWF, you are now technically a wrestler dylan it's okay i don't even know like you're gonna have to go one level below technically <laughs> like metaphysically you are a wrestler <laughs> well speaking of jwf i know we usually try to save jwf stuff for the third segment but one of the premier jwf athletes i feel like we should talk about has welcomed a life into this world the rat boy himself connor of the Ascension has welcomed in a sweet baby child. Meaning, ladies and gentlemen, Connor is now officially not just king, but father of a rat baby. He did it! 
<laughs> I don't know how Connor would react to hearing you out of context refer to his newborn child as a rat baby. <laughs> look at that little rat baby. Uh, Connor, you got a little rat baby. Hey, Connor, look at that little rat baby of yours. It's such a cute little rat baby. I'm proud of him. He did it. He eats up. Uh, well, I mean, obviously, I would think Connor getting this news, he would be um, just munching on a big old wedgie cheddar. Because, you know, uh, when most babies are born, you celebrate with a cigar, but Connor just celebrated with a mozzarella stick hanging out of his mouth. <laughs> then he hears me call it a rat baby. He just looks up and he's like, hey, she's only half rat. My, w <laughs> My wife is a full blooded Latina woman. Oh. And that is a half Latina, half rat baby. How dare you? Retina. Oh my god! Retina! Get the. Oh no. Oh, that just. I don't know how that one feels. That's the Retina. I don't like that word. I do not Latina. like the word that you've just created, Scotty. Really? Because the name of this episode is now Retina Boys. Oh boy. Yeah. Alright, well, I. I guess if we don't want to talk about the sweet Retina baby of Connor, we can move on to, um, you know, Fight Boys is, Fight Boys has been going hard for a while now, and I think it's time we branch out. We have our JWF pay-per-views, and of course we have the WWE stuff on the BS Network, but I think we need to get into something new, something fresh, and that is textbooks. So, uh, th this is where that one's going. Yeah, I was, I was gonna I say see. this is this is this is this is the worst transition you've had, and I was here when you messed up your own plug earlier. Oh no no no, gentlemen, we are starting a textbook, and we're starting with the Fight Boys math textbook because Ric Flair has released some information over the past week, all of which has entertained me to no end. Just thinking about the mathematics behind it, um. Let's start with this first one. Uh, as for his recent near-death scare, Flair said that he did the math, so he's done the work. This is what you would find in the back of the book, and calculated how much he was drinking each day. All right, students, pull out your textbooks. I've done all of my math. Drinking between 3,700 and 4,000 calories worth of booze Soda, splash of cranberry, put in my body every single day. Like 20 drinks a day. God damn. That man is a pickle. You need to understand. Look at how in shape he still is despite losing those four <laughs> using those four thousand calories. I now completely believe the rumor that Ric Flair does five hundred Indian squats every morning. <laughs> You know what's bad is it didn't, it, the whole 4,000 calories worth of booze thing didn't strike me until I realized I eat 2,000 calories a day and that's it. Rick yeah. drank more than me. Me is like not <laughs> how much I can drink. Rick Blair drank more than I am as a human being. Let's see, hold on, I want to see how many calories in a beer. I feel like Ric Flair is classier than that. Well, hold on. Let me pull out the calculator because I'm curious. How old is Ric Flair right now? Older than he should be given his lifestyle. <laughs> oh, I'm honestly surprised. He's only 68. All right, so Ric Flair is 68. Let's assume a, a starting drinking age of 18. That means 50 years of drinking at this rate uh, of 20 drinks a day. That means in his lifetime, Ric Flair has consumed roughly... <laughs> Over a thousand drinks. No, that that doesn't seem right. Hold on, let me do this right. Oh, I did it wrong. I did. Okay, hold on. Wait, wait. Let me do this. All right, now let's do this math. Um, Ric Flair is sixty-eight. Take a, a, a assume a starting drinking age of eighteen. That's fifty. You left years. off three zeros. You idiot. He's drinking. He's drank three hundred and sixty-five thousand. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we take. Take that, uh, take that, multiply it by 365, we get 18,250. Multiply that by the 20 drinks a day. That means in his career, he has drank 365,000 alcoholic beverages. Multiplied by the roughly, uh, what, probably about 200 per drink? That means he has consumed 
oh, almost a billion calories worth of alcohol. Okay, we we went we went pretty far into Steiner territory somewhere in here, and I don't know where. That's because okay, well actually no, that's that's chapter two. We are only in chapter one of the Fight Boys official mathematics textbook. Chapter two is called Chapter two is called Holler if you know your times tables. <laughs> Oh, man. Now I'm trying to think of just math-related puns with wrestlers. Hashtag wrestler math on Twitter, ladies and gentlemen. Um, now, we've solved question one, which is how uh, can, much... Um, so that when we finally get to imaginary numbers, can, uh, the, front pe- can the front page just be John Cena? <laughs> yes, 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 it can. Thank you, sir. Um, chapter seven gets really weird though it's all about like kidnapping children and wearing Miss uncle fester face paint uh where do we get oh um in the children's book can we have one super kick to the face two super kicks to the face enzo had a bad day why let's count why one super kick two super kicks three whole flips in the air a uh, big cast is seven feet tall. <laughs> How many big casts does it take to reach the height of the Empire State Building? Now that was some real shit that happened, and you know it. I do. Listen, the problem. Listen, we can't put that in a textbook. You can't teach that. Oh shit! Oh fuck shit. you! Shit! That's good. Okay, we've got to move on. We've we've got question one down. Now we're on to question two. Uh, last time we took information that Ric Flair gave us about, you know, per day, and we extrapolated that to see how much it would be in his lifetime. This time we're going to do the reverse. We're going to take his lifetime amount, and we're going to try to figure out how much he did in about a day or, I'm going to say a week for this one. Um, so according to TMZ Sports, while Ric Flair taped his ESPN 30 for 30 special, he revealed that in his life, he had slept with about 10,000 women. Okay, hold on. Afterwards, in an interview with People, Flair said, I really wish I hadn't said that because of my grandkids, and I only love one now, his uh, fiance, Wendy, who I'd assume have been, they've been together for a couple years, so I'm going to say Ric Flair's only fucked a, one woman for two years now, so 66. Uh, Blake, uh, my math boy, could you look up when the age at which Ric Flair lost his virginity? No, let's just go with a hard 16. Alright, uh, okay. Now, do we assume he had a constant rate? No, no, things- Who are you talking about, Scotty? It's Ric fucking Flair, of course he did. No, 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 Ric Flair, it picked up once he- once he put on the, uh, once he put on the robes after that plane crash, started styling and profiling his way across the U.S. Well, I think we'll just Before do Before that, average... he was the size of a small barn, and, like, nobody was fucking that. Well, that's when he had multiple and if, people And if- and listen, and if they were, they were homely women, I'm sorry. Okay, so, we're gonna say at about 66, he stopped fucking a lot. Take away the 16, so that gives us 50. Now multiply that by 52, so the year, that gives us 2,600. Now we take that 2,600, divide it. No, you take 10,000 and divide it. and then Would you... it be that? Okay. I like it's now become actual math class. Dylan's like, wait, wait, hold on. No, no, no. If we're doing this, we're doing this correctly. No, no, no. This is, this is me becoming slightly irked that you don't know how to do basic math at <laughs> the age of... By the way... That's an average of 3.8 women a day. A day? Yeah. Woo! No, that would be per week, because we multiplied by 52. We did not multiply. Oh, you're doing weeks. We're okay, fucking th- nerds. I know, I'm the one who started it, so I am the instigator here, but we are fucking nerds. Well, look, when, when you... Scotty, when you were doing your fantastic imitation of Scott Steiner, um... <laughs> and just messing with the, these math things, I had to take it upon myself to become the actual technical math boy and just do these calculations. So, fuck, 3.8 women per week. Damn, Flair. Yeah, 
I'm to be fair, there were a lot of times where all all three like all four of those were in one day. It like listen, if you if you count like the last ten years of his life, he's probably slowed down considerably. A lot of those were from like eighteen eighty to nineteen, like to two thousand. I feel like it's a real bell curve situation. You had like when he was big flare, then the crash happened and it started rising and rising. And then it started slumping, probably like beginning of the two thousands, and that's what really took us to uh, today, where he's now only with one. I think I've met his current fiance, which is very weird. Huh. Um, so yeah, that's that's flare math, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully, flare will be flare will be back with more math problems. Please, God, no. No, oh, d- dude, I'm telling you. I'm bringing fire on all of these segments I'm bringing. I mean, I'm bringing flare math. I'm bringing, uh, what was the one? I came up with a good one last week. We've got all these great segments that you guys... Do, 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 do. Sorry, did you guys hear me? My internet cut out for a minute there. It was really weird. Anyways, as I was saying, we have the, uh, we got the flare textbook stuff. We, uh, oh, that's right. We had, uh, shoot or kayfabe that we uh-huh. came up with and did it, did it, did it. Uh-huh. Sorry, God, it's it's getting. Scotty, unless you want to, Scotty, you're Scotty. Unless you want to hear the sound of you talking to yourself as Blake and I hang up, you're gonna drop this shit immediately. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're saying is, straight out of the side, Mr. Shake and Bake, Cold Forty Five, wrestling cause it feels alive, great memories and good good time. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Talk of Wrestling, the official Art of Wrestling response podcast, where we discuss Colt Cabana and all of the actions surrounding him. And this week, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be he talking a lovely about... lovely podcast with Evil Uno. Really <laughs> nice. Guy seems really good. Terrible visa situation, but you know. Well, yeah, we're yeah. not going to... I mean... We're not responding to the art of wrestling itself. I just named it because it's kind of catchy. We're just talking about stuff that's come out about Colt Cabana. And um, apparently... Did you know he's Jewish? (laughs) (laughs) No, apparently uh, a long time ago he had this guy in his podcast named CM Punk. And he made some horrible comments. Wait, who? Who did he have? CM CM Punk (laughs) made some horrible comments. Who is this guy you're talking about? Well, he made some horrible comments about... Oh, oh, is this Phil Brooks? Yes. Uh, uh, what was it? Walking Dead fan 69. Um, Walking Dead enthusiast and comic book writer Phil Brooks. Look, I know you guys know what I'm going to say, which is why you keep interrupting me, but he kept talking about fucking Ryback. <laughs> it's... I really don't think he was talking about fucking... Listen, you need to stop pushing your fan fiction, your fucking CM Punk slash Ryback fan fiction. This, more than anything else, is just me giving all the respect to Colt because Ryback came out and was just like, you know, I I didn't really... uh, Hold on, I have the quote. To me, it was never a big deal. I could tell to him it's more uncomfortable for him, but like I told him, I never associated him, even though it was his show. I was just mature enough... To realize that he's not the one who said the comments. And just because he's friends with the guy, it doesn't mean, well, I hate you because you're friends with him. Um, and, uh, uh, he goes... That was awfully, like, tame for Ryback. Well, it gets better. Apparently, uh, Ryback and Cabana were booked on one of Tommy Dreamer's House of Hardcore shows. And Colt just walked up to him and was like, can I talk to you? Well, you know what, Blake? I understand. I understand that this segment just doesn't have that Ryback flair that you need. So let's go on to talk about Ryback discussing the night he should have won the WWE Championship. God damn it, there's more. (laughs) Which time? Scotty, which time? Was it the Hell in a Cell where... uh... It was the Hell in a Cell in Atlanta, Georgia, where a young... Scotty Moore was in attendance in a CM Punk shirt with a CM Punk beard screaming his head off as Brad Maddox shoved his fist Dylan-like into the dick of Ryback. Brad the Brad Maddox Maddox. Yeah. Um, It started that whole process for me where things didn't exactly go my way, also known as the rest of my entire career. Thank you, Ryback. 
I just remember it didn't feel right when they told me what we were doing. I don't know if the plan was ever for me to go over. You have no way of knowing. It could have been, but things change all the time. But 100% that night should have been the night Ryback went over. So let after- me, let me, let me, no, 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 Ryback, 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 let me take a Yes, second. Uh, the Hello? plan was, the, the plan was never for it to be you. Let me just. It was never you, Ryback. Hey, you should listen to this guy. He's a confirmed insider. <laughs> <laughs> well, my favorite is the fact that he, he talks about like, that should have been the night. That should have been the night I got the title. That was the night Ryback was on top. Um. And then went on to talk about the fact that it felt wrong to be inserted into that place when John Cena went down with an injury. So he was just like, that should have been the night, but really it shouldn't have been the night. John was John was injured and it was it was very upsetting. It was pretty bad. I will give him this. He probably should have like won one more in the feud against John Cena when they turned him heel. Because like oh, at yeah. that point he was actually he actually felt like kind of a main eventer like kind of a big deal. Right. Like he, if they had put the belt on him, it would have been like, all right, this makes sense. This guy's like a mo- like you know like like Braun is now. But like I can I can buy that. But then uh, Ryback's will happen and he was just dead forever. I feel bad because I really enjoyed Rybaxel for a minute there. They oh, felt I did like too. The... But 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 Rybaxel was one of those things. It's like Stardust. There's no coming back from it in- <laughs> unless you leave. Yeah. Oh. Uh... And you know what you can't leave, ladies and gentlemen? You'll never leave our hearts if you go over to patreon.com slash fightboys. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, patreon.com slash fightboys. It's now becoming an Enzo promo. I'm just like, all right, boys, let's talk about this. Uh, It's the only website where you can go to help support these good a fight, boys, right here, over here on the on the BS network. Now let me tell you something. Lady. Okay, I can't. It hurts. It physically hurts to be in, though. Um, but of course, that's where you can help donate. It's basically every single month you give a dollar, five dollars, however much you want. And of course, we do have perks over there for you on Patreon.com/slash/fightboys. Uh, if you donate a dollar, you will be brought in to everyone's favorite professional wrestling organization in the world in Birmingham, Alabama, the JWF. We'll bring you in. We'll put you in a match. You'll promptly get jobbed out, but otherwise, you gonna make it, baby. You gonna be on TV. I really feel the need to look up and see if there is another wrestling company in Birmingham, Alabama. So I can be like, well, technically, we're like only the second most (laughs) likely. I I believe I've checked, and the closest one is in Pell City. So we're good. But uh, if you donate $5, ladies and gentlemen, you will be a step up. You won't just be a jobber. We won't make you lose matches. You'll be a JWF mid-carder. Like my father, Scott Moore, he donated money. He's been brought into storylines, and you can be just like him. But if you'd like to be like me, if you'd like to be like Dylan, if you'd like to be like Blake, if you'd like to be about like Griffin Clouds, if you want to be a champion, then donate $30 over on Patreon.com slash FightBoys, and we... We don't know how. We don't know when. We don't know in what way. It might be like Enzo, so be warned. But we will make you a JWF champion, but that's only available to you if you donate over at patreon.com slash fight boys. Boys is spelled with a Z. And gentlemen, I think that means it's time. I would like to point out that we have all but admitted the uh the level of corruption and viability of this organization Shh. oh it's oh, out there wait which organization oh i believe you of course mean that amazing birmingham alabama based professional wrestling organization the jwf and it's time ladies and gentlemen after an absolutely fantastic pay-per-view last weekend we are back and of course The ball has to keep rolling. We got to bring in new talent. We got to keep going because we had some exciting matches, but now it's time to move on. And unfortunately, uh, at the beginning of this, I hate to do this, but we do have to announce that, unfortunately, Scott Moore, after that horrifying superplex onto steel chairs by Clint Clouds, collapsing the ring, destroying it, Scott Moore is unfortunately out with an injury. His back was destroyed during this match. He pulled his shoulder. Doctors don't know when he'll be able to return, so we wish all the best to you, Scott. That's what you get for not upping your donation, motherfucker. Anyways, 
Uh, and then in addition to that match, ladies and gentlemen, we did also have an absolutely fantastic fatal four-way match for the JWF World Heavyweight Champion, where Scotty Moore took on Griffin Clouds, our current champion, took on the Dylan, took on Blake Tanner, and the match was absolutely chaotic. Now, Blake, you saw it. What did you think of it? Well, I think this was um, just a wonderful match. It was more, um, you, you know, Tibbs was a mastermind in this. Tibbs took Griffin Clouds, and he put him against three great opponents, three worthy champions in their own right. And this was, it was really, he was trying to send a message to Griffin um, that he was getting too big for his britches. But as we saw, Griffin Clouds came out victorious. I'll say, and then, I mean, after quite the abuse from his, uh, from his opponents, I believe he got uh, that big stomp from Blake Tanner. He got the Steel City kick from Scotty Moore and SMG and Upper Dicker. He ate everything they threw at him and then still came out hitting the Dylan with a big neck breaker covering him for that pin while the BS were arguing at ringside. Some might call, some have called it a fluke. Some call it a genuine victory. I don't know, but it looks like uh, the VWO have gathered in the ring for a celebration of Griffin's amazing title victory last night. Let's have a listen. Ladies and gentlemen, the following interview is paid for by your JWF Tag Team Champions, your JWF World Heavyweight Champion, and by the good vape boys that run this company, the Vape World Order. Well, you know, you know what's funny about that, Trav. It's not that we only pay for this. We practically pay for every damn thing in this company. We lent Captain Tibbs blank check after blank check after blank check. Money that we made in our own business ventures outside the JWF. And how does Tibbs repay us? by putting our dear daddy in a deadly street fight and putting me in a completely unfair and unorganized fatal four-way that's left me, well, unable to compete for the foreseeable future. Look, everybody saw what happened to me last night. My neck was nearly broken. My shoulder had to be popped back into place after the match. I don't know, I didn't know if I could go on. But then, then I remembered who I was. I remembered who I was representing. I remembered that I am a cloudman. And what do all cloudmen have in common that none of the rest of you pathetic excuses for wrestlers do? A cloudman never gives in, no matter what happens. No matter what is thrown against us, we will fight and we will win. Which is why I am proudly standing here as your JWF champion. And tonight I'm going to be forcing Captain Tibbs to try my newest brand in the Cloudman Vape Juice family. It's a delicious, delicious sweet flavor called Humble Pie. Oh, and it looks like the music of Captain Tibbs is hit. I think Captain Tibbs is coming out to try out that vape juice that Griffin was talking about, but Tibbs does not look happy after all this gloating from our champion. Let's see what he's got to say. No, no, Griffin, I don't want to try your new flavors. I, I want to tell you something. I want to tell you something straight from Tibbs' heart. Last night, I fully expected you to go out there and crumple like a wet piece of tissue paper that you are. But you didn't. You survived the gauntlet of the Dylan, Scotty Moore, and Blake Tanner. Three of the toughest sons of bitches that have ever stepped foot in a JWF ring. You had stood them all for long enough to find a nice little spot where you could put in a cheap shot. And you did not throw away that shot. Oh, you didn't, Griffin. It was, it was masterful. 
you were able to score a fluke win off the Dylan by landing a quick neck breaker of all things and getting that sweet one, two, three. Oh, you won, Griffy boy. But that win was cheaper than a $2 shot at the grimiest bar in five points. You waited. You let the BS do your dirty work for you. While they beat down the Dylan, while they beat that man senseless, you watched and waited like a cowardly little hyena. In the minute, oh, the minute the lions were distracted, you seized the moment and stole victory from every other real champion that deserved it. But that was then, and this is now. So I heard through the grapevine that you're feeling a little beat up. You got smashed around, busted beyond all belief, and I'm sorry to hear that, I'm real sorry to hear that, but it's just too damn bad. Griffy boy, you're a real champion now, and a real champion has to defend his title. And old Tibsy is gonna make sure that you defend that title every single night till you lose it. So starting tonight, you're gonna go one-on-one -on -one with true championship material. You're gonna go one-on-one -on -one with the shining red-headed star of the JWF, Scotty Moore! Oh my God, ladies and gentlemen, this is amazing news from Captain Tibbs. I mean, a lot of us had considered Griffin Clouds a paper champion, a man who wasn't, who didn't need to hold that title, but if anything, this, this, what Captain Tibbs is doing is either going to prove one of two things, that Griffin Clouds deserves that title, that he's able to fight every single night, or of course, it's going to get that title ripped away from him. I think this is absolutely brilliant thinking by Captain Tibbs. Of course, Tibbs is always the one to put himself in a situation where he can win no matter what. Very, very interesting move from the captain, and uh, I think it's going to make for some great matches from now on. Exactly, and I, I don't think Griffin does not look happy about this announcement running around the ring. Um, but in all honesty, I think it's something that he's deserved after after faking all of these injuries, especially in light of the fact that Scott Moore, it may, his career may be over. It may be done for him, a man who's having to deal with these injuries right now. I wouldn't stand in a ring and feign injuries in the light of this. No, I totally have to agree with you, Scotty. Um, Griffin Clouds is about to put up or shut up, and... It um, you know, he's about to get his just desserts like a good, sweet rip off of a newly charged vape. <laughs> of course, and uh, Scotty Moore may not be the only man that Griffin has to deal with after the results of the King of the Steel City Tournament was revealed at last weekend's Little Tenderness Vapor, er, vapor View, which is, of course, what the VW will call it. Um, is that what we're going to do instead of sold out? We're going to have a vapor view? <laughs> <laughs> it's pay-per-view. Oh, shit, we need to, don't we? JWF, in your house, the hottest new pay-per-view. Now we're going to start spoofing. We're going to start spoofing retro pay-per-views. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, of course, the end of the Steel City Tournament saw Guy Fieri take down Rat Boy Connor with a huge fist to the jaw as Connor was diving off of the top rope. Looks like he was going for a big rat splash. But that hand of Fieri clocked him cold and in just three seconds ladies and gentlemen we had a new number one contender and we had a new king of the Steel City in the form of Guy Fieri now I was completely shocked by this Rat Boy Connor seemed dominant throughout this entire tournament uh, he 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 had a real chance of winning and um and Rat Boy <laughs> Connor the king of the rat babies who has just welcomed his own rat baby into the world uh I can't imagine how devastated he is after that loss. Yeah, I hope he I hope he gets really depressed and never comes back. <laughs> and of course, speaking of number one contenders, ladies and gentlemen, we do have another number one contender as announced by Captain Tibbs just moments ago. Scotty Moore tonight is having a one-on-one -on -one opportunity against Griffin Clouds for the JWF World Heavyweight Championship. And he's standing backstage with actually our top interviewer, Honeypot, has returned, He's still banged up after his interview with the Dylan last week, where the Dylan absolutely decimated Honeypot, laying him out, leaving him left for dead. But Honeypot has returned, and he is backstage with an interview with 
Scotty Moore. <laughs> uh, Mr. Moore, Scott, Scotty, Scotty, uh, mm, sorry, I have a question for you. Oh, honey pie? Oh, hey, big man, how's your knee doing? A and you're back. And, the and basically everywhere else. Look, look, man, let me tell you something. That SMG I hit on the Dylan last night, that was for you, big man. You don't deserve any of his crap, I'm telling you. Oh, m much appreciated, thank you very much, but I have a very pressing question. We, we, the audience wants to know, the JWF fans, it's been revealed that you have a one-on-one -on -one opportunity for the JWF title tonight. You're going to be in a match with Griffin Clouds in the main event. How do you think you'll be able to handle Griffin one-on-one? -on -one? Oh, honey pie. I think that attack from the Dylan really did knock him loopy, didn't it? Because you're talking to the wrong guy here. Because the question isn't if I can handle Griffin Clouds. It's if Griffin Clouds can handle me. Because I don't know how good your JWF history is, but Griffin Clouds has never pinned me in a JWF ring. Griffin Clouds pinned the douche of the smart side, the Dylan. He even pinned my best friend, Blake Tanner. But, but he'll never pin me. Even with his brothers at ringside, he'll never pin me. Even if he blasts me with an under vapor, he'll never pin me. I mean, hell, I kicked out of that thing before, and I'll do it again. Only to jump up and kick Griffin's teeth down his throat, up his gums, in every other fucking direction. Because he did the one thing that you never do. He insulted my family. He sent his father after mine, putting my own flesh and blood into the hospital with a broken back. He assaulted my brother, Blake Tanner. Now I know Griffin, you've got a big family, which means you should understand, the minute you mess with my family, you mess with me. And I've got an SMG cocked and loaded for you, Griffy. So get ready. Uh, thank you very much, and back to you gentlemen. The prodigal son makes his way to ringside, Scotty Moore. Oh, Scotty Moore, let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. He seems ready for this match, driven, focused, if you will. I mean, last night, as we saw in that fatal four-way match, Scotty almost seemed distracted. It seemed like he was trying to fight off the Dylan, trying to make sure Blake wasn't going to interfere. Uh, and of course, taking on Griffin Clouds, his attention was divided. But now he seems dead set, focused on Griffin Clouds. What do you guys think his chances are tonight? Hmm, definite possibility, definite possibility. Scotty Moore seems a lot more energetic than Griffin Clouds. He seems um, like he's come out uh, more on top than Griffin. I don't think he took as much punishment uh, at the pay-per-view as Griffin did. Um, because there is one point where just all three of those men were beating Griffin Cloud senseless. Uh, so, I, I think he's got a real shot here. Of course, and uh, looks like the, the two men have made it down to ringside. The bell rings. Match is about to begin with... Is that... Is that the Dylan? I mean, normally in a, in, in a match like this, you would expect someone like the VWO, Clint Cloud, someone to interfere. But it looks like the Dylan has just come down to ringside. And Scotty looks like he's screaming at Dylan, telling him to get out of the way, telling him that he has another shot eventually. And then he looks like, oh, Scotty Moore turned around and Griffin grabs him, hits him with an under vapor. The, the match has just began. It, it can't end like this. Refs counting the pin. One, two, oh. And Scotty Moore kicks out, proving that he is the man to kick out of an under vapor, if anything else. It almost looks like Dylan's just laughing at ringside. As Griffin sits up, he seems angry kicking Scotty in the ribs. I mean, guys, I, you both... I think it goes to show that Griffin Clouds never learned um, WWE 2K 101, which is never use that saved up finisher first thing. Bad idea. <laughs> of course, and I, I mean, in a match like this, how... But even then, how do you react mm. when someone kicks out of your most devastating finisher? I know Griffin's experienced it before, but with such a shock surprise, you'd almost think it would have worked. But uh, it looks like Scotty's making his way to his feet, and Griffin tosses him into the corner, going for a big clothesline. Scotty ducks out of the way, and Griffin flies into that ring post. Scotty runs against the ropes, hits a big clothesline. Griffin is knocked down, and Dylan does not look happy about Scotty's sudden 
sudden ire, his sudden fear. I think Dylan, his plan has backfired on him. I think he came out trying to distract Scotty to try to get some, to, to try to cause him to lose this match. But I think it's actually caused Scotty to go mad, crazy, and all of that, all of that anger, all of that rage is being taken out on Griffin Clouds. It may lead to a victory. All right, now it looks like Griffin's just laid on the ground prone, and Scotty has grabbed, grabbed him by the hair, raining fists down into Griffin's skull. Oh, and he's calling for it, slamming his leg against the mat, stomping his foot, and he hits it, the big Scotty kick. All right, I think Griffin clouds maybe yet. Yeah, oh, that's that Scotty kick might have knocked something loose, and Griffin going for the pin went, oh, no. Looks like Dylan has grabbed Scotty's foot, pulling him out of the ring. He's interrupted the count. Dylan screaming as Scotty and him go back and forth when suddenly, whoa! Griffin clouds with a big dive over the ropes, flipping, hitting a beautiful senton, taking him out. It is absolute carnage, ladies and gentlemen, as three, three men lay prone into the mat. You know, they gotta be careful with uh, the Dylan out there. If, uh, you know, if, uh, I, if, if he attacks either of those men, then it's a win-win for Griffin. So that's not something that uh, you'd wanna do. You don't exactly. want to get disqualified in this kind of match if you're Scotty Moore. All right, and it looks like Griffin has picked Scotty, tossing him into the ring, and he's calling for it. Oh, he hits it! The big neck breaker, the neck breaker that actually defeated the Dylan last night. Looks like Griffin goes for a pin. One, two. Oh, and Scotty kicks out, and you know Dylan cannot be happy about that. The move that lost him the JWF championship last night. Scotty seemed to kick out of it as if it was nothing. Dylan does not look happy. But I don't think Scotty's going to be happy in a few minutes because it looks like Griffin is calling for another under vapor. Scotty's slowly making his way to his feet. Griffin picks him up, going for the under vapor when suddenly, oh my god, Scotty flips around backwards, picking him up into an under vapor of his own, hits the under vapor. I don't think we've ever seen anyone, not any non cloudsman, ever use the under vapor. This may be unprecedented. Going for the pin. One, two. Oh, and Dylan interferes once again, placing the foot of Griffin Clouds on the bottom rope. I mean, at this point, the referee does need to get involved. What do you think, guys? Uh, you know, I would say that, but but uh, if the ref doesn't see it, uh, unspoken law, then we can't do anything about it. Oh, but it does look like Shibata, our ever our ever faithful referee, does have those wide eyes, and he looked over and he saw Dylan with his foot on the hand of Griffin Clouds. And he's out of here, ladies and gentlemen. Looks like Shibata has done his job kicking the Dylan out of the arena. And it looks like Shibata's busy arguing with Dylan, who's fighting back and forth. When suddenly, oh, a big low blow from Griffin Clouds onto Scotty Moore. It looks like he's picked him up for another under vapor and slams his skull into the mat and goes for that pin. One, two, three. Ladies and gentlemen, Griffin Clouds has done it. He has pinned Scotty Moore. He has retained his JWF World Heavyweight Championship. I mean, I didn't think he would. this would happen. And, and you, if you notice, Dylan, as soon as he saw Griffin Clouds hit that low blow, he gave up. He started walking up the ramp, and that gave Shibata just enough time to turn around, see that under vapor, and then get, in, get there for the count. It was... Huh. Mm, Master manipulation by yeah. the crazed man, the Dylan. Of course, you can see Dylan standing on our stage, staring at Scotty, who's just laying on the mat covered in blood. I think that under vapor actually busted him open, and Dylan is laughing maniacally. I think Dylan is something has gone wrong inside the head of the Dylan. Griffin's making his way to his feet, holding the title high when that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think the king has arrived because the music of Guy Fieri plays and the king of the Steel City and the king of the Flavor Town is here. And I think he's got a me message for Griffin Clouds. Ladies and gentlemen, your king is here. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, royalty has arrived in the building. But you see, what good is a king without his crown. Everyone's been celebrating my victory in the king of the Steel City Tournament. The citizens of Flavortown are rejoicing, but I've yet to get that gold to wear. I've yet to get that crown for my head. And that's where you come in, Griffin. 
because I'm the new number one contender, and I'm taking that title from you. I was the most dominant champion in the celebrity division, and I guarantee that domination will continue with you. And I don't want to wait for a pay-per-view. I don't want to wait for my right moment, my Wrestlepalooza moment. That's why next week, Captain Tibbs made it official. Next week, Griffin Clouds takes on Guy Fieri, and this king is going to claim his crown. Oh my god, looks like looks like we have our match confirmed for next week. I, I guess Captain Tibbs was not joking. He's going to force Griffin Clouds to defend that title every single week, and next week, what a match is being made as the king of the Steel City takes on the leader of the VWO for the JWF World Heavyweight Championship. I mean, how do you guys react to this news? <laughs> Griffin Clouds is truly about to run the gauntlet. He thinks that his victory tonight over Scotty Moore is the end of it all. No, no, no. Not by a long shot, according to Captain Tibbs. It looks like Griffin Cloud's nightmare is just beginning. To be fair, though, given Captain Tibbs' ability to properly carry out any kind of plan, I doubt it'll work out. All right, and of course we do have that match next week, and next week we may see a, uh, a response from Scotty Moore for what the Dylan has been doing to him this week. I mean, I, it's something I honestly didn't even expect. It was the last thing I, w I mean, I thought maybe the VWO would interfere, but I didn't think Dylan would be the one to lead to Scotty Moore's first pinfall loss at the hands of the leader of the VWO. And hopefully we'll see even more next week on JWF Professional Wrestling. So what did you boys learn this week? I didn't learn shit and you can't make me. <laughs> Fuck your books. But I, I spent so much money. So much money on these books. Oh, God. I... <laughs> I learned how easily you can um, you can confuse 30,000 with 300,000. Yeah, it happens. And, of course, I learned that um, the best defense for a Ryback segment is Colt Cabana. Um, Dylan can be found on Twitter at SexyChuckyT. Blake Tanner, where can they find you? At Blake Tanner. A Tanner on Twitter, Blake A Tanner. Um, and you can find me on the Darkroom Vidya, the Darkroom V I D Y A on YouTube, where we do some video game videos. I haven't been doing much on there, but my buddies, uh, BJ and Josh, always put out content. So go, go check it out. And you can find me on the Twitter machine at Scotty Mo. Do we have to enunciate, like, pick a random syllable in our Twitter handle? You can um, find yes. me on Twitter at Scott T Mo. Uh, you can buy my book on Amazon. It's called Quiesel Corp, Q-U-E-Z-A-L-C-O-R-P. And make sure to check out the Quiesel Corp podcast on iTunes. We're actually coming to the end of the first audiobook, and that means something very, very exciting is coming up soon that I'm going to announce on the podcast. You can find that over on the BS Network's website uh, at a load of pure BS. Dot com. You can find that. You can find Opposite Attractions, my show where uh, where me and my buddy Jim Murphy actually try to make our own theme park. And of course, A Load of BS, the show where me and Blake, without the guise of having to talk about pro wrestling, go off the rails and basically go insane. But all that's over on a load of pure BS.com. That and then all the YouTube stuff, the WWE 2K17 playthrough I was talking about. I've got some gaming playthroughs, a really a show I'm actually very proud of called Bad Examples, where I try to take some of life's most complicated, multi-layered concepts and boil them down into just the dumbest examples I can think of. One of my personal favorites, I uh, I tried to describe what depression was by using the character of Gary Oak from Pokemon. Um, and as always, ladies and gentlemen, you can find us at a load of pure BS.com. Step up to the merch table at merch.aloadofpurebs.com. Find us on Facebook. Donate to the Patreon. Find us on Twitter at Fight Boy Show. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, when you're a fight boy, you're a fight boy for life. <laughs>